Hello internet friends, my name is Napier and welcome to my top 10 tips for surviving in Project Zomboid. Some of these tips might be a bit controversial since they contradict some of the advice that I heard when I was learning the ropes. But these are the key lessons I've learned and the reason I've been able to progress from a hapless victim of circumstance, barely clinging to life in a zombie apocalypse, to someone who feels reasonably confident I can survive at least a couple of months in Project Zomboid. Controversial tip number one, don't fear the zombies, or at least don't be that afraid of them, and quite large groups of them, even on Apocalypse difficulty. A lot of the advice I've heard involves being sneaky, darting into buildings, grabbing what you need, then getting out without destroying any zombie brains. The problem with this is that you're constantly open to attack from every angle. The zombies are literally all around you and it only takes one or two of them to hear you before this snowball effect occurs and every zombie in the region is pathing towards you from every direction. Before you know it you're cornered in a bathroom with two choices, either accept you live there now eating cockroaches and shoe leather or you come out crowbar swinging which generally leads to a quick death. A much better approach, in my opinion, is to clear the zombies out of an area before you do any serious looting or exploration. Go around picking off all the stragglers and targeting those large groups from afar, trying to get one or two of those zombies to notice you and peel off from the pack. In this way you can whittle down those large intimidating crowds. Spatial awareness and an awareness of sound, decent pair of stereo headphones is a no brainer for this game, those are key because the main danger is drawing attention from unexpected directions, the sound of combat travels. Get used to this safety maneuver, this 360 pivot. Do this routinely to check there's nothing coming up behind you and that you aren't being pushed towards another mob while you give ground. Going toe to toe with more than two zombies, that's never a good idea, particularly on Apocalypse, but backing off tackling enemies in manageable numbers that's what we're trying to do so we're not avoiding combat constantly we're not tackling unmanageable mobs we're picking our targets drawing them away being strategic about what we fight because fighting can be the safest thing to do rather than putting yourself in those difficult compromised situations with zombies all over the place number two connected to that first point not only is avoiding combat entirely a bad idea running away can also get you killed you'll quickly find that there's no way to put enough distance between you and a pack of pursuing zombies before you run into another one, leading to a situation where you're sprinting through town, aggroing everything. Eventually you'll become fatigued, run out of food and water, and even if you've made it to the outskirts, you're screwed because all those precious resources are mainly in the urban areas. You need to think differently about it. Running away in Project Zomboid doesn't actually mean you run. You just leg it. It means you break line of sight. Instead of running blindly, you're looking for corners, cars, tree lines, or even the interior of buildings you may have already scouted that will block the zombies view. Once they can't see you anymore, that's when the crouch run comes into its own, allowing you to give them the slip and then double back around at pretty quick speed. This really has been the key for me in terms of survival. You're not looking for a large area that's free of zombies to catch your breath. All you need is a backyard or an alleyway someplace. Yes, you're still surrounded, but nothing knows you're there. Here you can rest, eat some food, then head out again once you've regained your composure. Number three, respawning zombies suck in Project Zomboid. The default time for respawns for both survival and apocalypse mean that you will never get a chance to experience the game's intricate crafting and survival systems because you're constantly fending off attacks from newly materializing enemies. Not only that, the way the zombies respawn is ridiculous. I opened a bathroom the other day and 20 zombies poured out. What were these people doing in that cubicle before the apocalypse? I don't even want to think about it. For this reason, I would suggest choosing the custom sandbox option where you start a game and select one of the presets at the bottom. This will make all the settings the same as if you'd chosen survival or apocalypse from the main menu, but you can tweak the zombie respawns. I would set these three options to zero. Respawn hours, Respawn Unseen Hours and Respawn Multiplier. This will remove the unrealistic respawning behavior. Yes, the game will technically be easier once you've cleared out an area, but that's the point. Like in an episode of The Walking Dead, the cast aren't constantly being assaulted. There are periods of quiet where they're building a home and a community. 
Sure, they might miss a zombie and be surprised when it springs out of a toilet cubicle, but not 20 of them, and definitely not when they knew for a fact that toilet cubicle was empty 12 hours earlier. Yes, no respawning means you can theoretically kill every zombie on the map, and if you don't like that idea you can tweak the timing so they will come back at some point, but honestly the map in Project Zomboid is so massive that you will almost certainly die long before you've purged the world of infected. Number four, I still have to resist the urge every time I start a new game to make my base the home that I spawn in. It's a natural human inclination, I think. You have no reliable food source, no security, so our first instinct is to hoard resources from the immediate vicinity and fortify our starting position. But it's the wrong idea. There are much better places to settle than your starting building. You'll begin to discover them as you play more of the game. So what you should be doing instead is exploring the town in full first. I'm serious, don't settle until you've identified every building in a region. You can survive easily scavenging from house to house, particularly once you've got the hang of sneaking and giving zombies the slip, and you'll get good at finding relatively safe beds and things, bedrooms to sleep in. Just make sure you close the curtains, never sleep with open curtains. It's a totally understandable impulse early on to create that safe space, but following on from my assertion that some of these tips are controversial, I'd say resist it. Embrace the explorer scavenger lifestyle until you've got the lie of the land and you know what the really good options are. Number five, grab a notepad and some crayons. Crayons are my favorite because you can add notes to the map in any color, but a pen or pencil will do just as well for writing in a notepad or any one of the many slips of paper you find lying around. These allow you to keep track of things, like how many skill books you've found and how many of those you've already read. You can make a checklist of the items you need to find on a scavenging run or the places you need to visit. Honestly, without these little slips of paper, I would go nuts trying to keep track of everything that I needed. Yes, the game doesn't necessarily need to provide this. There are pens and papers in real life. I've got several of them, but I love the fact your character can write things down in the game. It adds immersion for me. Project Zomboid has also taught me that after food and water and maybe an axe from B&Q, a biro would be what I was looking for in a, in a real zombie apocalypse. My sixth tip is about opening doors. Now, assuming there aren't 20 gangbangers inside, we shouldn't be too afraid to open doors. This is the stance, combat stance, always facing forward, weapon at the ready. Pop open the door, being ready to back up if needed. I often find a push here is... You, more useful than swinging a heavy weapon uh, you can push more quickly and sometimes your character will do it automatically assuming you're not overwhelmed you can follow up with a heavier attack so don't be too afraid just be ready to push and um, if there's more than though more zombies than you can handle 180 and run but once the door is open there's no zombie in sight you can't hear a zombie it's safe right nope Always enter a room with caution and check those corners. A zombie attack from behind is usually a bite and that will be your run over with. Tip 7. This is the point at which I roll back everything I previously said about not being afraid of zombies and reveal the coward that I really am. Those crowds of zombies, you should be wary of them. Once a few zombies have mobbed up, they have some additional abilities to pull you down and grab you that aren't there with one or two enemies. They're particularly difficult if multi-hit is not selected. Uh, it isn't as default on Apocalypse, I don't think. So I'm appealing for calm. I'm doing a Yoda. You're not here to prove how tough you are. You're here to survive, so don't risk it. Don't think your character is stronger than a mob of zombies. They aren't, and they never will be, no matter how many skill boxes you've unlocked. Give them the runaround, split up the pack, use cars and other small obstacles to disrupt their pathing until the mob has fractured to an extent where the zombies are in ones and twos and you can tackle them. Much more manageable and more impressive in a way since you're using your strongest weapon of all, which is your brain. The one thing the zombies don't have. Number eight, a key aspect of how the classes work is important to understand in Project Zomboid. I didn't at the start. It's not as simple as a couple of free starting skill boxes in cooking for the chef, for instance, or maintenance for the repairman. Whatever skills you have at the start, your character will continue to get an XP boost for those skills throughout the course of a game. It's for this reason I found Project Zomboid very difficult when I started. I decided to choose the unemployed option. Veterans of Zomboid will think, what? 
<laughs> I didn't know, okay? The idea being I would be a blank slate, a slobby layabout with no skills who comes into his own after the world has ended. It's kind of the Shaun of the Dead idea, except it's incredibly time consuming to level up any skills in this game. Choosing an area you want to focus and the best class in order to do that is a much better way to go. If you want to be able to drive cars, repair cars, starters mechanic, shoot guns, you're going to pick the cop or the veteran, grow plants, you start as a gardener. Don't make the mistake I did and think you can level everything just that little bit slower than the starting classes. It is a lot, lot slower. And for me, it led to a lot of repetitive drudgery before I learned this lesson. And after I started doing this picking classes, it became a lot more fun just to play the game. Number nine, on the topic of missing obvious things and looking like an idiot, another mistake I made, which I'm hoping for you to avoid, is the assumption that you can't shoot anything with a gun without a few levels in aiming. You absolutely can. It's risky to use the guns early on, apart from anything else they'll attract every zombie in the area, but you can absolutely hit things and gain levels pretty fast once you've got the ammo for it. My error was moving. So you have to stand still while you shoot before you've got some levels. By default, you will see the enemy you're aiming at outlined in red. This red highlight will shift to green as you stand still and line up the shot. Only then do you pull the trigger. Seriously, I was running around cursing the game's difficulty, lamenting the fact it took hours to get good at anything. Imagine my embarrassment when I realized all I had to do was stand still and aim, give the character time to aim. And finally, number 10, my final tip in this broad overview of how to start enjoying and thriving in Project Zomboid. I'm planning to do more guides because I'm really enjoying the game and there's an update coming up. So stick around, maybe sub up for those future videos. But let's stick to shooting for this final tip, since knowing this has really made the gunplay in Project Zomboid a lot more enjoyable for me. The shotgun is your best friend when it comes to leveling. Yes, you can hit stuff and gain XP with no levels in aiming, but zombies take multiple hits to drop and there will be misses. So gaining levels, particularly when it comes to conserving ammo, is important. I'd suggest using the JS2000 shotgun almost exclusively until you're, you've got about level three in aiming. You'll find many of these shotguns all over the place more than you'll probably need, even taking into account repairs. The spread of one shell hits multiple Zs and you can gain a couple of skill boxes really quickly by simply shooting into the mobs and just be aware that sound travels. It's one of the loudest guns in the game. There's also the double barrel shotgun. That's a much rarer spawn, but I think it has a wider spread. Uh, although you can't fire it as fast. But yeah, shotgun is your friend early on. Just be wary. So those are my starting tips for Project Zomboid. Let me know yours in the comments. And remember, this is a guide aimed at people new to the game. So anything too technical, let's save that for a future video. Sub up if you haven't already and also like the vid. It really helps me out. I've been Napier and I'll see you next time.